What's up, guys? I'm JC with XR Music, and today we're catching up with the one and only Moore Kismet. How you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. Um, so we got a couple questions for you today, and our first one is, this is our first time interviewing you. Um, can you tell me where does your stage name Moore Kismet come from? So it comes from my mom. We came up with it um, one day while we were in Bible class. Um, we were watching somebody give a lecture and they had mentioned the word kismet and we had our scripture readers pull it up and read the definition of it and it meant luck and destiny and at the time I wasn't really entirely confident with where my production where my skill level was heading and I was thinking about quitting but my mom came up with more kismet as kind of an affirmation for myself to kind of keep following my destiny because it's like it's, I'm like chasing after more luck and following my fate and realizing my destiny. And um, that's essentially where that name comes from. Um, in part also because she knew that it was her destiny to take care of me and to raise me. Um, and that's just been my name ever since. I love it. It's kind of like a reminder. Yeah. At the young age of 17, how does it feel to have your music career skyrocket in such a short amount of time. <clears throat> is it overwhelming navigating your music and being a teenager? Yes, it is. It's it's very strange because I don't really have, un unfortunately, I don't have much of a social life outside of my career. And every attempt at trying to make one always ends up being rendered futile because of the fact that I have to tour so much and I have so many deadlines to meet. So I'm just trapped in my bedroom doing absolutely nothing um but like you know I think I think that's something that I've been trying to learn as I get older um is like trying to kind of make more time for myself to spend time with my friends and to kind of at the very least just talk to them and chat with them over discord even while I'm like coming up with other creative ideas or something of that sort I just I, I want to make sure that I have that life there and that I have those people as a support system to continue to kind of just traverse through life. So what do you like to do outside of making music? Mm. I love to hang out in like Discord VCs with my friends. Um, I really also, I enjoy just kind of like whenever I go to festivals, I love enjoying enjoying the show itself rather than trying to be like so detail oriented and like focused on my own stuff um I love going out to eat with my friends I love playing games on my phone I love watching tv I love playing games on my computer it's like just like super like rudimentary teenager stuff like it's yeah. it's like it, like if you ask any kid the same question even if they weren't kind of in the same position that I'm in they'd probably give you a similar answer and yeah. like if it, if it was a guy you'd probably get something along the lines of being in some kind of sports activity as well so like I'm just you know yeah normal things yeah so tell me about your brainchild that is the album universe I read that it took five years in the making so I just know that you poured your heart and soul into it so Absolutely. what is the storyline here and what are your favorite tracks on the album? Ooh, okay. Um, Universe is an album that um, that I wrote as a way to kind of express where I was at at the time and to kind of express my emotions and my stories as best as I possibly could through music, especially considering is how there are a lot of songs on the album that are just purely instrumental. And so I wanted to give myself an experiment to kind of see if I could tell these same stories and exude these same emotions through sound and not having to be entirely reliant on lyricism, especially because at the time I didn't know many vocalists, I didn't know many songwriters. So I don't know how to reach out to these people and I don't know how to ask them like, hey, would you be open to working on a song with me? Because like, I'm just, I'm a socially awkward pleb. So like, I don't know how to talk to people. And it just, that's always been a very big thing for me. I'm trying to get better at it because I like vocals and I love working with vocals. Vocals can be used as a very unique and interest, uh, interesting instrument, which is why I love using vocal samples in my music so much. 
um, because it gives me the opportunity to just kind of really experiment with the range of experimentation in the story. And it's just really beautiful, especially when you find the right samples to work with. Um, as far as favorites go, I would have to say um, Wasteland, Ultraviolet, and Flight of the Superiority Complex are like three of the favorites that come to my head. I love every single track on the album, but Wasteland was a song that was two years in the making and I finally got a chance to finish it and it literally the idea just came to me so naturally. Um, Ultraviolet is one of my favorite songs. I think probably even my favorite like for like surefire favorite um, because of the fact that I got to work on it with two other incredibly talented black artists who kind of were at a loss with collaboration at the time. And I think just the three of us coming to that, coming together to create that song was just really powerful and really special. And that meant a lot to us at that time. And even now when the song is still being played out, when it's getting thousands of streams on like DSPs and stuff, you know, it's just, it's just really important and really special to us. And Flight of the Superiority Complex, I mentioned that because I wrote that with Liam L.O. And it's kind of like, my attempt at writing like a dark pop or like ballad type song with mm -hmm. my kind of sparkly flair. Like I wanted to kind of write something that was very emotional, that was slow, that took its time to get where it needed to go. Um, that's why it's almost like five, six minutes long. Um, and like, I just, I, I really, I really loved getting to spend time making that song perfect and working on every little detail and every little aspect of that song, making sure that it, was gritty when it needed to be gritty, but also raw when it needs to be raw. And right. I think that was, that was really, really special. I know people might be surprised that I didn't say Rumor because Rumor is also another song that I really enjoyed writing. And also it was one that came from a very dark period of my life. But um, I don't know, I feel like Rumor has kind of like, the emotions that led me to creating Rumor, I don't feel as much anymore. And so while I still enjoy the song and I understand the purpose for the song being there and being a part of the album for that reason, I just know that like, I'm not in that same position that I was anymore. I'm a lot older. I'm mm -hmm. a lot less, you know, I'm a lot less like deep rooted and things of that nature than I was when mm -hmm. I was little. So like, I'm just able to kind of live with the track and just be connected to it then and there. And, you know, it's just, it's just well, really nice. Well, do you ever consider maybe your track takes on a different meaning? Like now that it's, you know, maybe not once what it was before to you, but it could, you know, maybe mean something different now. You still have like appreciation for it. Oh, for sure. 100%. Like that's, my, my feelings about Rumor have not changed in that it is one of the most important songs that I've ever written. And it's one of the, like, the, I guess that's one of the, I'll say strangest emotional periods of my life when I was writing mm -hmm. it. And I, I knew I wrote it then and there because it had a purpose and it needed to be finished and it needed to be put on my album. But also now looking back on it, I'm like, I'm glad I can write songs like this now and then just continue to go on about my life and focus on making myself happy and making things that make me happy um, instead right. of being so attached to this for so long that I just get completely shot out of any creative motivation, any motivation to live my life. Um, and I think that's kind of traversed to how I feel now and why Rumor is still a very important song to me, but I also don't feel the same emotions that I felt when I first wrote it. Sure. sure. Well, following your album, you are starting your first headlining tour. Congratulations. Thank you. How are you bringing the album to life on stage? And what is the vision you want someone to have when they attend your show? Um, I want people to go into it knowing they're going to just have a good time. I want people to kind of experience these songs because uh, a lot of the, the set, it's not really a live set. It's a, it's a DJ set, but 
in this DJ set, I also get to play a lot of the music that inspired me and that continues to inspire me to write things that are in a similar vein to or some of the songs that were on Universe. Like some of the songs that I play in my sets are songs that kind of help guide me to writing specific sections of songs on Universe and cultivating different energies on Universe. Um, and I just, I really appreciate this set that I've curated for the Universe Tour because I just get to have fun and I get to show yeah. off my music. And that's like a very, a very cool thing. And it's a very fun thing for me to do because I know that people are going to enjoy it. And I know that people are coming in to see that. And I'm just very grateful that I get to do this because I know that for a lot of people right now, touring is incredibly difficult. And so I'm just lucky that I even get to do it. Um, and I really hope that more people come to the shows because that would just be truly phenomenal. And it would be awesome to kind of play to more packed out crowds. Um, Cause that's been a dream of mine ever since I was little. And that's something that I've always kind of like wanted to do. Um, so I just, you know, I'm like trying to make sure that every show is a good one and that I make sure that every show is a good one. So that's kind of been my biggest thing right now with this tour is making sure that everybody has a good time regardless of who shows up, so. I'm sure everybody will have a great time and I'm sure you'll have packed out shows, there's no doubt. Um, you're talking about like your inspiration for the shows and for universe, does all your inspiration come from your life experiences or where else do you pull your inspiration from? because it seems like a very emotionally charged album. So are they all from things that you've experienced or is it, you know, some inspiration pulled from elsewhere? Um, from a stylistic and production point of view, it was pulled a lot from different influences and different songs that I really enjoy listening to. But as far as the overall stories that I tell, it does directly pull from my own experiences. Love that, very genuine. Um, so when you first started out, you were making more dub heavy tracks and even put out a release on Never Say Die Records. Um, following that, you created your second album, Revenge of the Unicorns, which essentially is more aligned or along the path of what your style is like today. Um, why did you make that shift from kind of like a heavier dubstep style to more of what your style is like now? Because making things like that didn't make me happy anymore. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know how else to put it. And I know a lot of people ask me that, but it's just, it's gotten to a point where I'm just like, you, you can't keep doing music at all if you aren't happy while you're doing it. And I think trying to continue to create stuff similar to my first EP on Never Say Die was just kind of draining and took a lot of the love out of creating music for me. And so I started working on Universe again. And there were a lot of things that I taught myself through working on Universe that I applied to working on Revenge of the Unicorns. And I will, I will say that the, Revenge of the Unicorns is realistically one of Never Say Die's most stylistically diverse projects they've ever put out, which I'm really appreciative of because they don't really have the greatest history of doing that. Um, but I just, I knew that if I didn't make that EP, then I would not be happy with the continued trajectory of my career. Because otherwise, if I kept making stuff like my old EP, I was going to continue to pigeonhole myself. And I was going to continue to put myself in a position where... I was eventually going to just quit more Kismet entirely and never release music again. That was that was the point I was getting to at that mm -hmm. time. And I was just like, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do that to myself anymore. And ever since putting out that EP and continuing to finish up Universe and then finally putting out Universe, I've been in a much happier place writing music now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so funny to see how many people I know that have gone like that have literally followed T to T, like tit for tat, like the dubstep producer 
she made your pop producer pipeline. And I'm like, I've seen so many people do this. Like, or like at least like the the EDM producer to major hit producer pipeline, like right. low file, diamond pistols. Like there are so many people that I know that have taken this route and taken this direction. And I'm just like, they seem a lot happier creating these things. And, you know, I'm just like, I want that. I want that for myself. I want to continue to create whatever I feel is in my heart that doesn't involve me doing heavy sound design synthesis. So, right. Yeah. You're serving, you're serving yourself rather than serving maybe what people want. Exactly. And that's the, so, that's the way anybody should go into making any kind of music. Or any art at all for that point, you know? Exactly. Um, so I really adore your outward love and support for the LGBTQ community. Your representation in this space is has such a larger impact than I think that you could ever know. So for those who look up to you and are facing their own battles um, that come with being queer, what would you say to them? I would say no matter how tough it gets to never not be yourself. I think, I think life is way too short to continue to give attention to or feed into the desires of people who don't want to see you live your most authentic truth. And I think at the end of the day, you just have to be as open and transparent with yourself as possible and really think about who you want to be. Do you want to be somebody that code switches in front of people all the time where you're uncomfortable because you don't want to make other people uncomfortable by being yourself? Or do you just want to take up space and be yourself and do what you want to do and live your truth and not give two shits about whoever is uncomfortable with that? If they're mm -hmm. uncomfortable with it, that clearly just means they're jealous because they can't find the same love within themselves to realize their own truth. And while that truth might not necessarily mean that they might also be queer, they could also just be lying to themselves about some shit that they're just lying to themselves about. And they see you being authentic, being yourself, having absolutely nothing to hide. And they're going to take issue with that. And right. the point I'm trying to make is you can't let those people's opinions and their jealousy and their envy of you hinder you from being yourself. And that's something that I've had to try and teach myself and that a lot of my friends and family, especially my mom, have had to teach me. And I'm still learning how to get better with it. But I think the biggest part about it is just kind of being more open about myself and my life and mm -hmm. being transparent about the experiences that I go through as a Black queer teenager. Like, I do still get random 40-year-olds sliding up in my DMs asking for nudes. I still get random people calling me slurs in the comment sections of my SoundCloud mm -hmm. uploads. Like it's, it's nothing new. This shit continues to happen. I keep reporting everything. I keep, there's nothing else that I can do except just continue to live my life and tune it the fuck out. So how do you, how do you deal with the, the haters or the comments? You know, does it, does it really bother you or can you just kind of let it go? Sometimes it gets to me. But for the most part, I just block and move the fuck on or I screenshot it and then report it to Instagram or whatever social media service. And then I move the fuck on because I'm like, sure. what point? and sometimes I'm even like I'm even like that petty to the point where I will blast their asses on social media. So I'm like, I just I just I don't know how much I have to do that. And I probably will have to do it for the rest of my career. But mm -hmm. it's just it's just there are like certain risks and certain downsides to things like this but that's no incentive to just stop being yourself or to just stop right. existing or to just not be here anymore and not take up space that's not an excuse that's not a valid enough reason for you to feel uncomfortable with being yourself you should just be yourself and sorry Period. Period. i love it so my next question is, I know you were previously working on a TV series called Stargazers. Are you still screenwriting and are you still going to continue the series? I am still screenwriting. I am like probably going to be actively pursuing my filmmaking career sometime early next year. Um, awesome. 
and I'm currently working on like a lot of like projects that I'm very very happy about one of which is Stargazers the series is still in development we're still trying to kind of figure out a lot more about that project and figure out what exactly is we want to do with it we've had storylines done for a while we've had the pilot script done for a while um we're still going through some light revisions and trying to kind of figure out a rudimentary task before we start trying to figure out how we can pitch it to people but once that happens then i'm just i'm just i'm going to be really excited because that to me is like that is a very big part of pushing for more representation for queer people in the industry period, especially in animation and especially in film and TV. And so I think that's just a kind of a very big thing that myself and my friends who are co-developing this series with me have all stood firm with. And, you know, as much as we've all gone on about our own lives, we've all still kept in contact with each other. We all still truly love each other and we also truly believe in this project and we just want to see good things happen with it and mm -hmm. that's kind of the biggest thing we're focusing on right now is making sure that it gets treated well and that good things happen with it yeah i'm sure well will you be incorporating any of your own music into the show absolutely if i could tell y'all who is on the music team for this show like the music industry would flip its lids. Like I want to create one of the most sonically diverse soundtracks for any film or TV project ever. I want I want people to hear just how insane all of these different artists, composers, producers are coming together to create these crazy ideas. Um, because we've been working on some rudimentary song concepts for the show and it's just been absolutely insane. And I cannot wait for people to hear and see and witness what we've been working on. Um, it will take a while, but trust me, it's going to be worth it in the end. I, I really, I really have faith that this is going to be something beautiful and something massive for our community and for film and TV as a whole. And so I'm just, I'm really, I'm holding out for that Emmy. I'm like, I'm already shooting for a Grammy now. So if I could get the EG and EGOT, all that's left is the art for me. So yep. I'm, I'm shooting. I'm shooting so far for it. As you should. <laughs> As, it's going to be, I cannot wait for it to come out. Thank you so um, much. Yeah, of course. I actually, um, I did a previous article on you a while back. So I had been following you for a while and I was wondering if Stargazers was, you know, obsolete or if it was kind of on the back burner, but now I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, my next question is, did you know that you're a fashion icon in EDM? You're always <laughs> serving amazing looks with all your outfits. So I wanted you to describe your style in three words. Um, Ooh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, um, Expressive, androgynous, and colorful. Love it. Very much encompasses your style. <laughs> and my last question is, as a young producer, what advice would you give to other people just starting out or early in their careers? Um, I've said this in a lot of interviews where people have like asked me similar questions to this. And I've always said, never be afraid to experiment. And that is something that I stand firmly with because if, you, if you're if you like wanting to get into music production and you download software and the first thing you do is like start watching tutorials, I don't know, I kind of feel like you're already kind of in a very bad position. Like obviously you have to learn how to work the software but for me, I ended up teaching myself how to use it. And then from there, I was just like, okay, let's see what, where do I, where do I go from here? You know? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where, where I've been and where I was as a young artist, like just starting out, I liked experimenting. I like trying to figure out what sounds work where. I like trying to kind of figure out if I could experiment with a certain idea and like 
go from there. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think, I think any producer wanting to get into making music, I think should always be open to experimentation because otherwise you're not going to be able to develop your own signature sound that way. You're not going to be able to, you know, kind of figure out later down the line, how to make your music stand out and how to make yourself present in your music and make your stories and make yourself heard in your music. And, you know, I think that can be said for any art form, you know, experimentation is always key because you get to learn more about what it is you want to do. And I think it's just a very beautiful and unique way to go about learning how to create things. It's just going in, seeing what you do. If it's cool, cool. Keep expanding on it. Keep working on it. If it's not, fine. Keep it going. Keep it moving. Go to work on a different project. Start something new. See if that works out better for you. Um, you know, I've like I've always tried when I've when I've been creating music. Um, I've always tried to kind of go into it with no expectations about what I was going to create. Just kind of starting from a blank canvas, and then starting with whatever jumps out to me the most, and then building something around that. That's kind of how I've been working recently. And I think that's just deep rooted in having learned to experiment with my creativity and with my ideas at such a young age. And I think any producer who wants to like really, really get into it, like knees deep, should know that experimentation is the best possible way to learn more about your creativity and more about what you're able to do with your music and with your art. Yeah. I like that. Experimentation over replication. Exactly. Well, that's all the questions I have for you. I want to say thank you so much for your time. Um, you did a great job at Imagine. I can't wait to see you again. Thank you. Um, no problem. So for more news and updates in EDM, be sure to check out Exxon Music. Thank you.